And it was then, many years ago, when I came to the conclusion that this is in purpose. Because we don't want the soldiers, we don't want the Israelis in general, but especially not the soldiers, to make any connection between human beings and the people who stand in front of them. And therefore we'd rather leave it as it is. So it will look really like a place where you... I wrote once that we treat them like animals, but then I got so many uh, protest letters from animals' rights organizations that animals have also some rights. But then I got the idea that for any average Israeli, any average Israeli, would it be left, so-called left, or right, or center? For any average Israeli, a Palestinian who is not perceived as a human being like him. This is the secret. Here, it starts and here it ends. And this is true, believe me, I can't, I didn't talk to all the 7 million Israelis or 5 million Jews living in Israel, but wherever you scratch a little bit, even if you meet some peace activists, and leftists, some of them, you scratch a little bit and you will find this nationalistic approach in which there is something in us which is more than a Palestinian, which deserves more, which have more rights. And I'm really phrasing myself in the most careful way because there are also the, a lot of racists and, and, and really extreme nationalists. I, I mean, nationalists. But I'm talking about the average Israel, not very political, doesn't care much. But when it comes to talk about the Palestinians, you will always find this dehumanization which is an outcome of years of campaign in the Israeli media and the Israeli education system showing that there are certain things that we have the right to do and they don't, that we are not the same. I remember once in one of the satire programs in the Israeli TV, they interviewed member of parliament, member of Israeli parliament, Ahmad Tibi, and he is a doctor. And then the host is asking him, you must decide, are you a doctor or are you a Palestinian? <laughs> that cannot go together. It was, an, I mean, as a joke, but it was a very, very typical one. Because that's the way of thinking in Israeli society. So wouldn't it be this dehumanization? I think Israelis would have treated the occupation in a different way. But the dehumanization is there, and the role that I took upon myself many years ago, totally unsuccessfully, was first of all to try to tell the Israelis that the Palestinians are human beings. This, in Israeli terms, is a scoop. To tell the Israelis, to try to tell them that there are some Palestinians who play the piano. Unheard of to try to tell the Israelis there are some Palestinians who speak perfect English. Unheard of. To try to tell them that they care about their children. Unheard of. It was just last week, I don't know if you witnessed in YouTube, there was, it was became a big hit in YouTube. There was a small child of five in Hebron, New York City whose father was arrested in front of him. He wasn't five, he was four, but in YouTube they said he was five. I visited him last week. Five, four years old child whose father was arrested in front of him because he was, was blamed as if he was stealing water. Also, uh, the joke of the year that the Hebronite is stealing water from the settlements. I don't want to get to it, but really it's uh, so cynical. But anyhow, he was arrested, the father. And the child was screaming and screaming, Baba, Baba, Father, Father. Uh, and he tried to catch his father. A very, very touching moment. Really heartbreaking. Any one of us who is a parent <coughs> know it. Couldn't, become, couldn't remain indifferent to this scene. I'm telling this because the reaction of the IDF, of the border police in this case, was so typical. 
they said the family made a cynical use of this child. Now what is the subtext of this? The children don't care about parents in the Palestinian society and parents don't care about children. That if you see a child who is crying when his father is, hum is being humiliated, beaten and arrested in front of him, this can be only an outcome of of, 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 a, of a, a fabrication of telling him, go and cry. The spokesman say the family sent him to cry in front of the camera. Because otherwise, Palestinian children don't cry over their parents. Again, so typical. And I went last week to see this child. And to bring the story again in this uh, desperate effort that I'm doing for so many years to show the Israelis, here, look at this child. He cried because his father was arrested in front of him, exactly like if you would have been arrested, your child would have cried in the same way. But it's almost a mission impossible vis-a-vis -vis the whole machinery which is recruited to this mission of dehumanizing and demonizing the Palestinians, it's very hard to raise another voice. Immediately you are being <coughs> ridiculized as well, delegitimized, obviously. And in the present situation of Israel, and for me as an Israeli, this is today maybe a bigger concern even than the occupation, with the really outgoing process of breaking the Israeli democracy, or so-called democracy. Uh, this, is, this is now going on ever since this present government is in power, systematically again, law after law, appeal after appeal. You can see how all the checks and balances of the democracy for Jews in Israel is starting to break apart. Week after week, we have new bills which are aimed only to neutralize, to paralyze all the checks and balances from the Supreme Court, through the Parliament, through the media, through the NGOs, through the civil society. It's all falling into parts. And for people like me, it's, it's, it's a huge concern because then really we will get lost. Now, the Israeli society in the last 10 years, as I said, doesn't exist as a, as a factor, as a political factor. Those of you who, are, who have children, and I think most of us have already grandchildren, you remember and you know that when your child is crying, usually no reason to panic, usually. There is a reason to panic if your child starts to stare and not to react. This is usually a reason to rush to the emergency room. When a baby is staring with apathy and not reacting, usually this is serious. I think the Israeli society is exactly in this stage now of staring in a very apathetical, indifferent, blind look at everything, not having any moral doubts, nothing. The Israelis have no moral doubts about what is being done on their behalf, about what they are participating in, no doubts. <coughs> Majority of Israelis truly believe that the IDF is the most moral army in the world. Many times I say, maybe we are the second in the world. <laughs> Why the first? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll be the second one. No, 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 no. We are the most moral army in the world. And you can hear it from intelligent people, well-informed, not radicals, not nationalistic, not racist, not right-wingers. Many of them would even define themselves as leftists or peaceniks. And they will tell you, yes, we are the most moral army in the world. So in this framework, in which the Israelis feel very good about themselves, <coughs> life in Israel is wonderful. Tel Aviv.
Aviv is one of the best cities in the world, I can tell you this. Vivid, full of life, 24 hours a day. No moral doubts, no political discussion. Very, very little knowledge about what's going on in the occupation. And one new factor, which is new and also very meaningful, in the last 10 years, Palestinians and Israelis don't meet anymore at all. The old meeting points, which were not just meeting points, which were not equal meeting points, but still, Palestinians would work in Israel, would clean our streets, build our houses, clean our dishes in the restaurants. It was not very equal, but still something was going on between the two peoples. And at the same time, Israelis would go to the occupied territories to fix their cars, to fix their teeth, all for cheap money. This is over in the last 10 years. So today, practically an 18, 19, 20-year-old Israeli had never met a Palestinian, except of in his military service. And even then, it's, as we know, a very, very biased meeting point. But most of them wouldn't serve even in the territories. So they never met a Palestinian. A Palestinian never met an Israeli Jew. Any Palestinian less than 30 years old never met an Israeli. Many times when I come to the territories, children ask me for an ID because they don't believe I'm Jewish and Israeli. It cannot be that I'm not armed. It cannot be that I talk to them like human beings. They don't believe it. Many times I have to take out my ID and show them, you see, I'm Jewish and Israeli. No way they'll believe. Because this is unheard of. Now, this fact that both peoples don't meet anymore at all, which is the ultimate dream of the Israeli left, by the way. Separation. Eud Barak. They will be there and we will be here. That's the idea. Never mind that they will be there and we will be there and we will be here and they will not be here. Yeah. Separation is a very clear one. But the separation is working in terms that the two peoples have no meeting place, no meeting point at all anymore. Israelis don't travel, as I say, at all not, to the occupied territories. Palestinians cannot come into Israel. And this also, this also leaves such a great room for all those systems, like the media, the education system, because if nothing is going on physically, so it's all about images. It's all about indoctrination. It's all about brainwashing. Because the meeting itself does not take place anymore. So in this situation, don't expect any change which will come within Israel. This must be very clear. Anyone who expects a change from within the Israeli society has no idea what's going on in the Israeli society. The Israeli society has no reason today to go for peace. What for? Life is wonderful. Who needs this headache with evacuating settlements? What for? It's not that they care about the settlements. It's not that they care about the territories. But why all the hustle? What for? Life is wonderful. Why should we care about anything else? And we feel also so good about ourselves. So all the voices which come from the world are totally, I mean, leave them totally indifferent. Because, yeah, the world is anti-Semitic. What can we do? <coughs> I truly believe that Kastled was a turning point in the, in the attitude of the world toward Israel. A real turning point. And anything after Kastled is different. And therefore, even a relatively small story like the flotilla becomes a major international story because of Kastle, because the world is sick and tired, because the world starts to be impatient, finally, after so many years, because the world starts really to lose it, its patience. But for the Israelis, it's nothing, because for them, they have the filters to protect them. If the world is behaving like this, it's either the world is hypocrite, or the world is anti-Semitic. And in any case, the world is against us, whatever we will do. So why would we bother? 